Hi everyone, Chemist here, and today we are going to look at how to install and get the Pokecrystal disassembly up and running on a Mac. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I just very recently got a, a new laptop and I need to install Pokecrystal, the, the Pokecrystal disassembly on it to, to have all my work that I've done on my ROM and to continue any making making any changes that I want to do in the future. So I figured this would be a great time for me to make a tutorial video on how to do it for you guys that have uh, Mac computers. So the instructions we're going to be following are from just the Poker Crystal Disassembly's instruction MD file. I will have this linked in the video description, but even if for some reason that link doesn't work, all you have to do is go to Google and type in Poker Crystal Disassembly and just go to the prep poker crystal github page. Once you are here, you can just scroll down. These are all the files within the assembly, but you can click on the install md and it'll take you to the exact same page I was just at. So just in case that link stops working in the future. Now, like I said, we're going to be installing this on Mac, but you can also do this on uh, on on Windows and uh, and Linux as well. Windows, it isn't hard to get it up and running. You just have to get a, uh, a a software called Sigwin installed as an extra step, and some packages for it as well because you need Sigwin to to let you work in a Linux-like uh, shell environment. But Mac, it's, it's very simple to get going. You only really need two th or three things really. You need Xcode to get that to work. You need RGBDS for the tools to 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 work with the Crystal assembly. And then you need the actual Poker Crystal files, the actual disassembled Poker Crystal ROM. And then once you've done all that, you you try to build the ROM by using the make command. Okay. So what we'll do first is we will go to a we'll open up a terminal window. Okay. Now my terminal is on the the dock, but there are, are many. Uh, if you don't know where that is, you can do one of two things. You can you can open your launch pad and click the other folder and it's tucked away in there or you can just simply use spotlight so you can press the command space bar type in terminal you know it'll, it'll pop up and you can click on it from there but the point is you need to open up one of your terminal windows once you've done that you can just copy and paste the xcode install command okay now i already have xcode uh, installed um i i wanted to make sure this worked for the video but all you do is you, you run this command, it'll ask for your password, and it'll download the software. It's, a, it's not a very big software, it only takes about one, maybe two minutes to get it up and running, and uh, then you just, it just says done, you just click done. Here is where we're actually going to deviate from, from this install. Okay, so I tried to do this a little earlier just ahead of time um, and record the video on top of this, but this did not work for me. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use Homebrew, okay, to install RGB or compile RGBDS, okay. So I will have the link to this website right here as the second link in the video description, okay. All you do is open the Homebrew hyperlinked text, right, and copy the code uh, here on the Homebrew website, okay. Press paste, you hit enter. Okay, it'll it'll say this script will install Homebrew and all its associated files. Okay, you just hit return and type in your password, and it will start downloading and installing uh, everything you need for for Homebrew. Okay, so once that finishes, uh, we don't need anything else on Homebrew. We can come back to the to the website that is the second link in my YouTube video and we can type brew install rgbds okay I already have it installed but uh, but yeah that's all you have to do once you've done that we are done with that second link we can pull our terminal back up and you can see that we're still working within RGBDS, okay? So you can use the cd dot dot command to, to go back one, one level in your tree. Now we're in users, okay? So let's copy 
and paste the git clone command to actually get the poker crystal repository onto our computer. Again, this, the, these, both of these downloads are, are very, very quick because they're very light downloads. And now we can see we have a directory poker crystal. So that's great. Now all we have to do is change to that directory. So CD poker crystal. We're now working within the poker crystal directory and we can run the make command. Now the very, very first time you run make will take the longest because you have to convert all the dot one and two BPP files into PNGs, okay? So the very, very first time you run make is the longest. So it might take about a minute or so for the ROM to compile, but for like after all the, the images have been converted, uh, every time you run the make command, uh, it, it really only takes about 30 seconds to build the ROM. It, it, it's very quick, it, it, it doesn't take very long at all. So uh, once that finishes, we can go into here and open Poker Crystal, okay? And we can see that we now have a Poker Crystal GBC file. So that, that's the ROM. That's, that's Poker Crystal. That's the game Pokemon Crystal. If you would have gone into the Poker Crystal directory before we ran the make command, this, this would not have been there. It would have only been all the files about the ROM. This would not have been here, okay? So now you're, you're good to go. You, you just built and compiled the Poke Crystal ROM. You can just double click this with any emulator of your choice and you can go ahead and start playing the game that you, you built from scratch, okay? Now, let's go over just a couple of little basics while we're already here and I will explain kind of how you would go about editing um, the game, okay? So, the very first thing you're gonna want to do after that is you want to um, install the the program Atom, okay? Atom is a text editor for, for Mac and it's, it's something you really, really need to have if you're gonna be doing any any ROM hacking for inside the Poker Crystal Disassembly on a Mac computer. The, the default text editor on the Mac is uh, garbage, it, it, it's worthless. You, you can't really get anything done. So you really want to make sure that you have Atom installed. Atom is, is free. It, it costs nothing to, 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 to use Atom, okay? So let's say we we want to start playing around, okay? So uh, there, there's there's many things that we can that we can edit inside this game. Um, you, you kind of have to play around and use this Nintendo forum to get used to where everything's located and how to implement certain changes. But I know of one glitch that we can edit very, very simply because I covered it in my, my last video. It's, it's the video that explains why Burn Paralyzed and Poison don't help you catch Pokemon in the game. So I know for a fact if I go into the Poker Crystal Disassembly and if I go into the engine and the items and the item effects, I can open that file um, in Atom, the, the text editor. Okay. Let's push that over there. And I can scroll down. Let's see. How big is this file? Oh, it's pretty big. Let's look at. There we go. Okay. So we can come right here and see that this portion of the code where enemy mon status is being checked is commented. So I can just delete this and then hit Command S to save this. Okay. And I have now fixed that bug within the game. I got rid of that commented code and now it's implemented into the ROM. So if you open, if you go to user and Poker Crystal, if you scroll down and open this game right now in the state that we just made it, if you burn, paralyze, or poison a Pokemon, it will not ha help you catch it in any way. But if I go to my terminal window and go to the Poker Crystal directory, 
right, and make the ROM again after I made that change to that specific file, now if I open this ROM, because because it's done, you know, like everything compiled. I told you that once you once you try to use the make command after that first time, it's very quick. If I open this game now, I have implemented that change into the game. Okay? So you really want to have Atom, because Atom is very nice. If you... I don't know why it keeps opening all these every time, but... If you, let's say, open... Just to, just to any, any file, right? Let's open Battle Animations. Okay, you can use Command-F, to search for a specific thing inside each file. You can also replace, right? So let, let, let's say you want to make a, a hack um, in your ROM, and you know that in order for the hack to take place, ink bin actually needs to be bin, okay? You can find all the ink bins in the entire file and replace it with bin. Or let's say you know that there's a glitch in the ROM, and only the ink bins from lines 11 to 19, right, are, are the ink bins that have to be changed. Well, you can search um, only in selection and replace only in selection. And you can do case sensitive, right? So if I change this to a lower case in, I can change it to case sensitive. And, and specifically find something like that. So there's there's a lot of power Adam offers. It, it's very it's very very useful. It'll, it'll be very useful while you're hacking the game. So yeah, so that's basically how you get Poke Crystal Disassembly up and running on the Mac computer. You install Xcode. Very simple. You do that from the terminal, and then you use Homebrew to install RGBDS, and then once you have RGBDS, you clone the GitHub Poker Crystal disassembly. Okay? Once you've done that, you change the directory of your terminal to the Poker Crystal, and the make command is how you build and compile the ROM. Once you've done that, you will see that you have a GBC file within the Poker Crystal folder. And that's the actual game. And then if you want to do hacks, you use an Atom text editor on the Mac to open up any of these files, okay, make changes, save them, use the make command to try and build the ROM, and hopefully your ROM builds. Uh, if your, your hack didn't work, you will get a slew of errors, and you fix those errors until it works. And then once you've done that, you open the ROM and you test it, and it should work. So that's, that's a very, very, very basic overview of how uh, you use the Pope Crystal Assembly. I'll make some more videos showing how to do some other stuff in detail. But, yeah, that's how you get it up and running on a Mac. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope I hope you all start trying to use the Pope Crystal Disassembly yourself. And I'll see you in the next video.